I think it's important that when people engage my work or think about it, that they understand. My work doesn't stop once it's installed. Once it's on the museum wall or the gallery wall, that is actually where it begins. Because then that's where the social transformation happens. That's where a cultural exchange will occur between different people that are at different intersections of class in America. Welcome to Gladstone. It is rare for people who are in the work to be present in the flesh. And so the reception starts from five to seven and you're gonna see a lot of people coming through the door of many different backgrounds, many different ages, feel comfortable and free to talk to them, engage with them. You can stand by the work because there'll be moments where they're gonna be looking at the work and then they're gonna look and they're gonna see you, right? So you're the star, you're the celebrity. Cheers to all of you. Cheers. Thank you. It's like so cool you go to museums, you don't actually see the art. The art is in your As a certified community health worker. I, I'm gonna say help people advocate for themselves. Um, help them kind of put the pieces together to know that some of your everyday struggles and the things that you go through could be contributing factors to your health and you're not even realizing. So this is actually my childhood home right here. Um, this is a project in South Baltimore, Maryland, and it's called Cherry Hill. I lived here for 20 years before I bought my first home in North East Baltimore. So when she asked about a place, I was like, this place defined who I was. <laughs> you look beautiful and you match it so well. I didn't even need to match. That's gorgeous. Just like, <laughs> the way that I found out about the project was that the director for the Center for Health Equity, Dr. Kukrer, told me about LaToya. And she said, you know, LaToya is interested in featuring healthcare workers. And I thought it would be great if she could feature community health workers. And that's really the area that I've focused my research for the past several years, is looking at how community health workers help families and communities get linked to health-related social needs and how that helps reduce health disparities. But at the same time, a lot of community health workers are struggling with the same issues they're helping others overcome. And because so many of them are from marginalized, minoritized communities themselves, their needs tend to get overlooked. I never thought that someone of Latoya's stature would use her talents to really shine a light on who they are and what they do. In order to begin the process to make the portraits and do the interviews, I had to first meet with Tiffany Scott. She's basically the CHW's CHW. If I wanted to meet them and get them to come forward, it had to all go through her. And I emphasize this because it also meant that I had to learn how to see Baltimore through her point of view, through her lens, through her lived experience and her history being born and raised there as well. It is a real honor to have someone like Tiffany Scott here. You make me feel so special. <laughs> because you are. I just feel like I'm just that everyday girl. Like, this is my passion, this is my dream. Like, I didn't realize it was my dream until I was in the dream. Like, waking up like, this is what I really want to do. I have no idea what's in the future, but I'm still a CHW all the way. I'm still advocating, I'm not going to stop. I'm still on the ground when I can be, and I'm still in the policy making realm, just making sure that we get exactly what we need and just not sustainable funding but sustainable opportunities for us to grow. So each CHW were interviewed 
and then we would pick another date and I would go back and we would come up with the location based on anything that they would emphasize or thought about and I would then go back out again with all my camera equipment and then I would make their photograph. So this is healthcare for the homeless where Greg Rogers is standing. Vita Moore chose to stand in a park across the street from Star. Uh, Tiffany Scott is also standing downtown. And so to photograph her kind of standing there at the site, which right behind me where I'm photographing her is a bust of a general and having her kind of stand there and waiting for the wind to come in. This is at about six o'clock in the morning. So the sun is just rising. So it's becoming golden and having her body situated right between the Trans America Financial Company and Bank of America standing in that park that's really for um, war figures is to me a, a conceptual way to really make an iconic portrait of her, you know, situated at that intersection of what the city really means to what she actually represents. It is a two-sided monument where the front side are the portraits and interviews done by me as the artist and the reverse side are all photographs by CHWs. And this goes back to how I was trained and mentored by the great Carrie Mae Weems and the Dawu Bays. You, you keep the door open, you give people a seat at the table, you have a revolving door. So here, one of the participants in Photo Voice chose to make this photograph from another rooftop commenting on their living conditions and the conditions of the property. So a CHW who made this photograph wrote, there are no programs or interests from the landlords to help people fix their roofs or their leaky pipes. Slowly but surely, that house becomes condemned. People lose their safe housing and they end up on the streets or they move into communities that aren't safe or they can't afford the rent. And then the title that this anonymous CHW title for this picture is Townhouses, Baltimore, Maryland, 2022, amplifying the lived experiences of CHWs. It is essential that I am participating in the work, just as vulnerable and transparent with the subjects themselves, but also allowing them to speak back. Rarely do we ever see the people that are depicted or represented in a painting or a photograph or a sculpture. Rarely do we ever see them show up at the exhibition and speak for themselves. If I can be honest, you know, I'm someone that has always lived below poverty level. I'm someone that has always had to fight against the barriers that's been placed before me that had nothing to do with me. This is my former home, and these are residents of Johns Hopkins where I used to work. So I'm talking to the residents about how when your patients come to you, it's not just about their medical health. What's going on in their home? When they come to you and they seem zoned out, speak to them on a, a level that is not doctor-patient level, but humanistic level. And then once you do that before, you'll be able to advocate for them better and have a, bedside, a better bedside manner and better trust in your patients. Our practice is engaged by being the oldest community-based organization run by an African-American woman in Baltimore City for 31 years, Sisters Together and Reaching, reached out to women especially. It was about gaining access to the community, training those persons that would like to be community health workers or neighborhood navigators in the community to be able to help their neighbors. As we look around this room, what we see in this room is all community health workers working from different agencies, working in the institutions of the walls of University of Maryland Hospital, Johns Hopkins Hospital. We have people whose heart and soul is in to the space of just touching humanity with love to make sure that they regain health. 
they regain the resources that they need. All of my work is about community organizing around the photograph. And I encourage anyone who's moved by this monument, who is touched at all, to pick up the phone, call your elected official, and ask them, what are we doing for community health workers? Because we seriously need them in our society.